fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at the 40th anniversary Walmart exclusive reissue of Decepticon Communicator Soundwave Laserbeak and Ravage. Now as you can see there is a giant sticker on here. I actually just found this at my local Walmart this morning and they have already discounted it to about 50% off. It's not exactly 50% off. I think these are originally uh, 45 and they've already marked it down to 2530, which is also just a random number. Why not 25 even? I don't know. I wasn't gonna question it. I was very <laughs> excited to find something brand new already discounted. Uh, now with these reissues, these are supposed to be fully painted, no stickers, but I'm pretty positive that that is a sticker on laser beak there. So we'll take a look at that when we open this up. But up here gives you the kind of basic and you know instructions on how to transform him. Some really nice G1 box art here on the front. Really looks great. We got that new 40th anniversary logo, which I really like quite a bit. Uh, just some another sticker down here so it doesn't scan the old barcode uh, from Walmart. But yeah, I got some nice pictures of the figures down here. Same thing over here on this side and this side as well. And then spinning it around to the back, we have that iconic G1 box art of the space battle of the Autobots and Decepticons. And then we have our little tech specs here for our three Decepticons. Very, very cool. So yeah, I like the packaging quite a bit. Very reminiscent of the original G1 packaging, but I love that new logo. I think that looks really cool. So I'm going to go ahead, get these guys out of the box, and we'll take a closer look. So here are these three out of the packaging. Now, as far as I can tell, Soundwave appears to be fully painted. I don't believe there are any stickers on him whatsoever. Uh, which is really nice because the foil stickers on the arms back for the last time they did a reissue would peel all the time. Same with the bands around the two accessories, uh, which I believe are also fully painted. I'll bring them in in a moment. So that is nice. I am happy to have that painted. You have the nice Decepticon symbol here on the window. That all looks really good. Um, I honestly am not sure about Ravage. I think this... These look like they could be painted. I kind of think they are because of the, the way they're kind of that metallic. I think those are painted. Uh, this looks like it's painted here on the back. I think the eyes are painted. It's hard to tell. Uh, it does kind of feel like there might still be a little bit of die-cast metal here for the legs, these gray pieces. But it's hard to tell. I don't think there's any die-cast metal... Actually, no, maybe the toes are still die-cast metal for Soundwave. We'll check that out more uh, as we transform him. Now, Laserbeak is almost completely stickers. So I believe this red here is still die-cast metal. But these are stickers here. Over on this side, I believe everything here, uh, that's stickers. So that's kind of a bummer, because I thought the whole point of these was that they're supposed to be painted and not have stickers. Uh, but laser beak is almost entirely stickers, and so that's kind of a bummer. I mean, I'll live, but kind of feel a little cheated, honestly. Would have liked him to have been fully painted. So, like I said, I can't tell 100% Ravage might be fully painted, uh, because there's less, um... But then they went all stickers on laser beak, so I don't know. But uh, this works just as good as always. Go ahead, slide your cassette in here. Close it up. Looks pretty good. Pop Ravage in. No issues there whatsoever, so pretty cool. Uh, as far as the accessories go, we do have the two batteries for Soundwave. And like I said, I believe these... Red bands are painted, which is nice because, like I said, the stickers on the old reissue, they popped off all the time on me. And then you do get a sprue with three of these. I do not believe this is spring-loaded in any capacity. I honestly think you just pop it in there and it just kind of loosely clicks in. And then you pop it out again. Because there's like this almost looks like it's a firing button, but it doesn't do anything or activate anything when I pop this in. And I hit this button, it just doesn't, it doesn't, like it almost kind of makes it lurch forward a little bit, but it doesn't, certainly not spring-loaded in any capacity, so. 
Uh, but of course you can still store these on the back. So if you turn around and you open up the fake battery compartment, which I always thought this was a really cool little gimmick. And then you can pop in the batteries into the battery compartment. And that is weapon storage. And I mean, that was brilliant back then. It's still brilliant today. I love that. I absolutely love that. Uh, even has a little belt clip there if you want to take a sound wave on the go with you. Uh, the buttons, I feel like, really protrude a lot further than they used to. But maybe I'm just misremembering. Maybe they always popped out that much. Uh, but you might also notice the lack of chrome. There's no chrome anymore. Uh, and that is very evident in the accessories for the cassettes. These are just kind of uh, black, done in black plastic, and then painted with this. It's a nice metallic silver paint, but no chrome anymore. I guess they figured it was more cartoon accurate to not be chrome. I don't know. Doesn't personally bother me. I do still have the other ones the last time they did reissues, so... I could swap those chrome parts out if I really wanted to, but I think the silver paint versions will be all right. But let's go ahead. We'll get into some transformations here. So I think we've all seen this transformation several times at this point. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. Uh, if you have the batteries in the compartment in the back, go ahead and pop those out. And then we are going to pop this one into there. And this does have the nice little like inlaid red. I can't tell. I think maybe that is just paint. I thought it was a separate red piece, but I think maybe it is just paint the closer I look at it. But in any case, this one will go on the shoulder, and this one he'll hold as an accessory. So we're going to just go ahead, pop the legs down, like so. Then we are going to pull the legs down just enough so that we can have clearance to swing them down. You can start to pop the arms around as well. So again, pull this down. This can be a little difficult, it seems. This one really doesn't want to cooperate. We're going to rotate that and push it back up. So yeah, I think these toes... I think these are still die-cast metal. Honestly, I think... I can't tell now if these are... We'll have to get in close after I finish the transformation. I don't know why I can't pull this leg down. That's really, like, locked. Let me see if I move the arm first, if that does anything. I can't. I feel like I just can't get a good grip on it. There we go. Okay, that was really tight for some reason. But there we go. We finally got it. Flip the toe down. Bring the arms around. Pop out the fists on the side and let me adjust the camera so you can actually see. And then the head flips up and spins around. So we will add the accessories here. Like so. And there we go. G1 Soundwave. So he looks pretty good. As far as I can tell... The face is fully painted. You, it's kind of hard to see with the... Maybe if I take this off temporarily so more light can get in there. But you have the eyes painted red, face painted silver. A little bit of silver here on the sides. That looks pretty good. I like the paint here, the yellow trim for the window with the Decepticon symbol. I was trying to look down here at the legs... Again, I'm going to guess that that's paint because it's that same kind of metallic silver paint that we see on Ravage. I think this is paint as well. This one almost looks like it could be a sticker. But I'm going to say I think that's paint. So I believe he is fully painted. Let me pop this back on. So that's pretty cool. I think he looks good. I mean, articulation-wise, head can swivel side to side, arm swing, you have an elbow joint 90 degrees there, um, nothing in the wrist, you can kind of swivel the leg side to side. 
I guess technically if you pull this down again, you could have him kick forward if you wanted. Um, but because of the way he transforms, he doesn't have a real knee. He's only got a backwards knee. And then I guess the foot can go up and down. I mean, I feel stupid telling you articulation on a toy that's 40 years old, but here we are. <laughs> um, he looks good. Honestly, I think they did a nice job with this. I like this quite a bit. He does have these these fake buttons for the uh, the radio mode that I didn't really go over, but like a fake volume scroll and then like an off and on switch. But yeah, it's a classic mold. I mean, it's really fun. I think it looks good painted. Uh, let's go ahead. Let's bring in the cassettes. So we'll take a look at their transformation. So here we go. We have our two cassettes. I guess we'll start with Ravage over here. Um... We are going to start by flipping out the tail and bringing that down. The head will flip around like so. Then we are going to flip out the legs. So it's a pretty simple little transformation. Flip out the feet. For some reason I thought the middle part split but i don't think so and then we can go ahead and take these absolutely massive pieces here and peg them into the side they seem ridiculously big but then once you uh pop them onto the side here of ravage they actually don't look too big but yeah that is ravage um you could probably get a little bit more out of the legs if I want bring these down a little bit more and I mean you can split them so if you want one to be in the front and one to be in the back you can absolutely do that again I feel like <laughs> I feel dumb you know this toy is 40 years old but hey here's how it works but here we are so he looks good like I said I do believe he's fully painted I really do think he is fully painted and he looks pretty good I like him quite a bit Will he stand on his own? Probably not. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, all right. I'll take it. So next up, we have Laser Beak. And I keep looking at these like, is it possible it's paint? But I'm like, no, you can see the way the light shines off it. It's definitely stickers. Um, so we are going to slide open the wings. We are going to fold down what will be the feet and also will pop up these little spots right here i think this can open up even further yeah these can come out even further to the side here and then the head slides forward and then you can kind of move it up and then we're going to take these pieces and peg them into the top which I feel like really completes his look. I feel like he really needs that little bit there on the back. But yeah, there is Laser Beak. The eyes might be painted. Yeah, I think the eyes are painted. So we got something. We got something. <laughs> I mean, he still looks good. Don't get me wrong. It just seems weird to do two-thirds of the set painted and then Laser Beak is still stickers. And I'm, I'm not trying to harp on it. I'm really not. Because like I said, I'm not super upset by it he still looks good i just think it's a weird decision like they've taken the chrome out of everywhere else but then they decided they wanted the chrome here for the stickers i don't know they must have just run out of money but i also feel like this set was 45 why not just make it an even 50 and and paint him i don't know i don't know but again classic toys still hold up in my opinion still very fun I like them quite a bit. They were ones I never had as a kid, but got years, years later <laughs> in life. And uh, yeah, I, I still like them a lot. I think Laserbeak's pretty great. If I had to cho choose between the two, I think I like Laserbeak. Maybe just because they used them more on the show. Maybe that's why. But I also just think this is a really fun design. Um, Ravage is fine too, but he's very thin. And I feel like Laserbeak has bulk to him even without these pieces on top, like a cassette that kind of has a nice bit of expanding outward while Ravage is still very thin and you can still kind of feel like he's a cassette. But I still love them both. I just think Laserbeak's probably my favorite out of the two, but 
Very cool. I think it's a fun set. I mean, it's a classic toy. You can't really go wrong. It was a great toy back in the 80s. I still think it holds up. Now, obviously, toy technology has come a long way, you know, with articulation and things like that. It's a simple transformation, but it's still a lot of fun. And if it's something that you had as a kid, or maybe you always wanted it as a kid but never had it, in the case with me, uh, it's definitely fun to get and to have that bit of nostalgia uh, and also, this is just balancing on his arm, <laughs> so it's it's just gravity helping out. There's no way to attach it or anything like that. But they're still fun, and I think it's nice they've painted them here. Uh, I like the idea of painting them, especially for Soundwave, and I think the reason I don't mind it as much, I still think it's a weird choice to give Laserbeak all stickers, but I never had as much problem with his stickers. I had so many problems with the first reissue they did of Soundwave, where especially like this red band around here and then the foil stickers, the red around the forearms, those were constantly peeling and popping off. And even the ones down here on the shins were popping off as well. So uh, at least to have Soundwave fully painted, I think is a big deal because I had a lot of problems with his stickers. I never really had a lot of problems with laser beaks, I think because they're nice flat surfaces, so they stay on there pretty well. So I'm not anticipating, knock on wood, uh, any problems with his stickers. But again, it's just a weird, weird choice to me to, to paint two thirds of it. And then, you know, it must've been a budget thing, I guess, or they just thought the Chrome stickers looked better. Maybe they tried it as solid white on laser beak and it didn't look right. I don't know, but here we are. In any case, I still think it's a fun set. Now, if you have the original uh, reissue from, geez, how long ago was that at this point? 2015, I'm guessing. I don't know. Someone fact check me in the chat, in the chat, in the comments, please. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I don't know when that original one was. I know it's been quite some time. I think this one is an improvement over that one because I do have that one too. I think I even did a video for it a while ago. I'll try to find the, the link for it. I'll put it at the end of this video. But I definitely think this is an improvement over that because of the paint instead of the stickers because those stickers were constantly peeling. Um, now you lose a lot of the chrome, you know, a lot of the pieces on the cassettes especially, and even a little bit on Soundwave that was chrome is now just plastic. But you have a couple die-cast metal pieces, like I think his toes are still die-cast metal. I think the gray parts over here on Ravage are still die-cast, and I think the red core of uh, laser beak is still die cast so they do still give us a little bit of die cast metal but i think they're starting to pull more and more of that back because it's expensive <laughs> and they're trying to stay within a budget and so i think they're going to start pulling that more and more away and, and and subbing out with plastic but i mean i'm not married to the the die cast metal i have to be honest as long as the toy still holds its integrity and still stays up and stays together i'm fine with it not being uh, die-cast metal, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, but I'm kind of liking this new trend of taking the G1 toys and fully painting them. I mean, we've seen it with Hound now. We've seen it with Hot Rod. Um, the Seekers got that treatment. They're doing the Insecticons now. So I'm kind of liking this new way of giving us reissues, but improving them because I don't know if you guys know me at all. I'm not a fan of stickers. I don't like applying them. I don't like when they peel, you know, so it's a whole thing. I'm just not a big fan. Certain circumstances, I feel like Lego, for the most part, does stickers okay, and they usually, it's not too many, and they're always flat surfaces, and they stay on pretty well. So I don't mind, they seem to have it together on that. But any kind of, you know, trying to apply a sticker to a weird surface, like with Kamen Rider Soto figures, <laughs> or like foil stickers that don't want to stay on, like in the case of these previous reissues. So I really like this new trend of giving us reissues, but fully painting them. I mean, that, that hot rod from the movie line, fully painted, looks beautiful. And I'm so happy to have that one in the collection. And now I'm happy to add this guy. There's also a blaster that comes with steel jaw, I believe. Um, that should be out around the same time. I'm assuming, I don't know if that came out already and I missed it or it's on its way out as well. They're kind of releasing in tandem. I, I think they're releasing in tandem because they're both cassette players. Um, but he should be fully painted as well and come with Steel Jaw, which I don't think we've seen Steel Jaw at all in the reissue line as of yet. So I'm excited for that. And, um... I think they're continuing. Do we have two of the Insecticons so far? I think we have Shrapnel and Kickback. So I would have to assume they'll finish that off. But um, 
yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Honestly, I'm having fun with it, and I'm interested to see where they go from here. But uh, yeah, I think this is a good set. If you if you don't have any version of G1 Soundwave and you're looking for one, I think you'll be happy with this. If you bought the last reissue, I still think you'll be happy with this because I think it's a decent upgrade with the paint. Um, if you're just not interested in, in original G1 toys at all, because, you know, you're not old enough for that to have been your thing and you're happy with the newer toy technology, I totally get that. Uh, don't worry about this one then, <laughs> but hopefully, uh, well, I don't know. I was going to say, hopefully everyone can find this for half price, but then at the same time, um, if they all go to half price right away, maybe they'll stop carrying me. So I don't know how I feel about it, but I was excited to find it for half price at Walmart today and a little confused as well. I had to do a double take. I'm like, is this the, the new one? Is this, why is it half price already? But Walmart will do Walmart, I guess. So in any case, I think it's a good set. I've rambled on long enough. I definitely think you'll be happy with it if you decide to pick it up. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.